my. Hi, everybody. I hope you can see me. Uh, maybe you can't. Probably you can now. Hi, I might be very, very close right in your face. Um, <laughs> the reason I'm doing this video today is because there's a lot to do out here. And I think an important thing that I can do that might be helpful is to go around and kind of go through the property and show you some plant identification for early in the spring, some things that you might find on your property that can be helpful. So, wish me luck guys, it's really hard to see the screen in this sun, but we're gonna give it a try, okay? So I'm gonna pick up the camera and turn it around now. Okay, that's not what I wanna to get to. This is, okay. There's some wood that's gonna be for a raised bed. And right next to it, we have this plant. This is burdock. And you can see it's got these leaves which are very thick. And if you touch them, they're kind of soft. They feel, they're tough and sturdy, but the surface is soft, like, uh, kind of like suede. And they have these very, very thick stems. Now these are edible. The whole plant is edible, bottom to top, but the leaves are really tough. And if you're going to use them, you probably want to cook them because they really aren't pleasant to eat raw just because they are so tough. And the roots to them are commonly used in Thai cooking. Now, the roots can grow to be two to three feet long. The best time to harvest them is probably the first year after they grow. These have been here a lot longer than that. And so they do do a lot of good, but like I said, the leaves are tough, which means you probably want to cook them if you're going to use them. And because they are so tough, none of my animals want to eat them. <laughs> and uh, I don't really eat them that often either. But I do on occasion. Uh, the roots are uh, more often used in cooking. If you leave them go past the first or second year, they get tough and woody, those roots. And they can be like three feet long. So if you want to get rid of this plant, you really have to do some serious digging. And you might be wondering, well, with it all being edible and being full of vitamins, it really is really rich in vitamins and nutrients. You might be thinking, well, why would you want rid of it? Well, I'll tell you why. It grows to be, I'm trying to think about how high, probably about as high as a person and they spread like crazy. If you look closely, you can see there's some, there's some, there's some, there's some, there's some. It's growing in amongst everything in this area. And if you don't catch it in time, it'll put off these little burrs. And that's what the burdock burrs look like. Now, I'm trying not to shake too much. Okay, that's what they look like, and, oh, there, look at that, stuck in my shirt, and they'll do that, they will stick, they don't, see, they don't hurt you, they don't hurt, it's not like thistle, it doesn't hurt, but they stick in everything, and look, they even stick to your bare skin, and then, when you pull them off, it leaves behind little bits and it sticks in your clothes your shoes your your uh everything it sticks in your socks it sticks in your hair if you pick them up to try to throw them away they stick to your skin and that sticking to your skin isn't sticking in your skin it's not sharp things it's in addition to being having the burrs that stick in your clothes they seem to be coated with some kind of little sticky substance so they stick to your bare skin as well they don't hurt but they're annoying. They're very, very annoying and hard to get off your clothes. And each of those little burrs, which I have flying all over the place, each of those little burrs 
will turn into another one of these plants that grow to person height. So you can really quickly become overrun with them as I have and now they're going to be a big problem because of those really deep tap roots. So now you know getting rid of them isn't all that easy once you have them and keeping them contained to one area is also kind of a challenge. Now something else you can see growing in amongst them and bear with me everywhere I go I have to take a chair <laughs> so that I can sit. Uh, in amongst them we have these growing and I know what a lot of you might be thinking which is gee that looks like wild carrots and it does and I do have a lot of wild carrots growing on my property but that's not what this is in the same family with wild carrots you've got a lot of other plants Queen Anne's lace almost indistinguishable from it unless you dig it up and smell the roots and with anything that looks like a wild carrot, if you're thinking of eating it, dig it up, smell the roots. If it smells like carrot, you're good to go. If it doesn't, however, it's probably a relative, and the relatives are toxic or poisonous. And this, in fact, it's even in the name. This is poison hemlock. And this will grow to be, I think about eight feet tall, taller than a very, very tall person. And I think they look beautiful as kind of a, a decorative border. I think they look great. They've got that little cluster of flowers at the top and things like that. I am the only person I know who thinks they look great. Everybody else told me, you have weeds and they're huge. So, all right, fine. But I don't want them anyway, even if I do like the way they look. And even if nobody else complained about them, I still wouldn't want them because look, they have in one year spread all through there. They've spread up into my raised bed, up into the further raised bed back. I mean, and please forgive how terrible the property looks because I'm going to show you warts and all and the property looks terrible at this time of year. And then over here, you can see this mixture of the poison hemlock and the burdock where they've both decided to kind of just fight it out here in this corner and the funny thing is it never seems like one of them wins they just end up being about a 50 50 mix the two of them together taking over everything so what kind of things are they taking over here and you can hear all kinds of stuff here we have a little patch of something that you might see growing on your property and you might actually want a lot of people really do and I'm one of them this is a daylily it's not one of the really cultivated low growing daylilies it is kind of their less cultivated kind of wild counterpart that you see growing along the edges of roads maybe in a countryside near a wooded area uh, where you've got the kind of grassy undergrowth and then at the top of stalks you'll see a delicate pretty nice sized about maybe this big uh, orange flower that daylily and here's how you can identify them let me find it look at that Here's what, and this we're looking, this is the bottom, this is the top coming toward the bottom of the screen, but you can see that at the base, you've got this little overlap here, and the leaves are long and somewhat slender. Now, that's something to keep in mind because uh, irises when they're coming up look a little similar except the leaves tend to be I'm trying to think I don't have one to look at I think that they tend to be a little bit wider and less pliable okay so those are day lilies and I definitely want to keep them I want to kill off the and get rid of the burdock and the hemlock that's growing around it and just keep the daylilies and keep them and get them to spread so that's those few things now let's move on to the next thing okay now last year somebody to do me a favor I'm shadowing shading this 
don't know if, how well you can see it because I can't see the screen. This, with these tiny ruffly leaves, is what's left of my red currant. And somebody cut it down to the ground last year, so it has to grow back up. And ooh, somebody next door is upset. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. Okay, now, here you can see these little grassy looking things coming up. Those are, are an early blooming species that we're all familiar with, the daffodil. Here's a clump that's in bloom, but when they first come up, they just look kind of like little clumps of grasses, okay? Now there are some things that I want to show you here that you might have in your yard. They're really, really common, in fact. This right here growing is what's called ground ivy. Let me pick it. This was brought to the United States by European settlers. And again, I can't really see it myself. I can't see the screen, but I think I have it centered really well for you to look at. Uh, let me turn this around so I can see. Nope, I can't see the screen no matter what I do. Um, okay. Oh, there we go. See what their leaves look like? And they grow on a vine. And here where I live at least, they grow on most properties. They grow in amongst grass. They grow in gardens and things like that. And they take over everything. Now they like to vine close to the ground. They won't go up trees and things. They'll stay near the ground, but they will grow up over and around the things that you have growing in your garden that you want to keep healthy and not covered with ivy because they will choke out things that you want. And my understanding is that they were brought here by European settlers way back in the day uh, to be used. I don't recall whether it was for a food or medicinal purposes, but most people don't want them. In fact, years ago, I was working out in my garden and I had two little hillocks really near one another and they were covered with ground ivy and only ground ivy. Now this is ground ivy growing in a very sunny location and uh, with poor soil and things like that and uh, it looks a little unhealthy right now later in the year it'll probably look great <laughs> but um, <coughs> pardon <coughs> shaking the camera everywhere but uh, being that it is so invasive it does cover and choke everything else out if it can and usually it can unless you really fight it uh gardeners around here it's the bane of their existence they absolutely hate it and someone from our local gardeners club showed up i, I hadn't invited this person she just showed up at my house one day when i was working in the garden i had these two little hillocks on which ground ivy was growing and I allowed it to grow there and in fact loved it because it looked really pretty. These little nice shaped leaves and they were really green and every here and there there's a little kind of bell shaped little flower growing and you know of a lavender color so you had this rich green with these little spots of pretty color these little flowers really delicate look pretty I loved it so I let it grow in these two little hillocks and it was the only thing growing there and so it made a nice ground cover kept uh, soil from blowing away I didn't have to go purchase mulch it looked so pretty it looked a lot better than mulch would and it was something living in an area where I didn't intend to anytime soon plant anything else. Had I intended to soon plant something else, I would have mulched it to kill off other things and to hold the soil in place and to enrich the soil. But remember, mulch is dark in color, so it doesn't send any rays, bounce any rays back, so it, you know, isn't doing anything beneficial to fight any kind of warming that you have going on. And mulch also puts off carbon and anything does as it decomposes which is fine I mean if you're using it to hold down weeds or you're using it to enrich soil that's fine but I didn't need to do either of those things so really logically it was better to have something living there and the ground ivy looked better and this member of the garden club and this was like 
probably two decades ago, and I still remember, so it must have been pretty hurtful, uh, showed up at my house and told me, well, we would never accept your garden as an example of a good garden because of all this ground ivy. She said, we have to have some standards. And she actually looked down her nose at me at the time. And I'm not telling you this story to vent. I'm telling you for a reason. Uh, basically, they had decided that ground ivy bad and bad only because you have to fight it in a garden or it will take over. So it's not as much work to let it grow. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's less work to let it grow than it is to get rid of it. So therefore, since it grows without you really fighting to get it to, it's a bad thing. When logically and aesthetically, it was better than what they said was the better thing. And so I'm telling you this because it kind of gives you an idea of why it's important to know what you have on your property to the best of your ability with thousands of plant and animal and insect species y y you know none of us knows everything and we can't be expected to but the more you know about what you have going on on your property and what different things do for different things kind of I think the more enriched your life is and also the easier it'll be for you to get your property to do what it is you want it to do and to look the way you want it to look. Also, apart from any local ordinances that you have, don't ever let anybody else decide for you what you're doing in your garden. It's yours. Do, it, do what makes you happy. Now, down around these daffodils, you can see another plant species, and it's got thick roots, kind of a burgundy color that goes throughout the veining, and these pointy leaves, and it's a thick leaf, and these grow anywhere they can get a foothold. And this is something, I don't know what the scientific name is or what it's generally called by their people, and it's not the burdock that I showed you before, but this is a plant that um, colloquially they refer to as burdock. It grows bunches of red berry looking things later in the season and it will grow anywhere it can. You can see over here there's a line of it growing in this dead space. Now the reason that this area has so much empty dirt and looks kind of dead is that this wasn't this hasn't been worked a whole lot this this uh, patch of ground right here. Last year I did plant corn and things here and so it shaded everything else out so it killed everything else off. And I also put down plastic between the rows so that I wouldn't have to fight other things as much. So it ended up making it, you know, at the beginning of this season, it's it's looking pretty sparse. But we'll take care of that, you know, as we go. And back there, there are some uh, roots, uh, stumps from what used to be lilacs. There was a line of lilacs. They were really old. They didn't bloom anymore. I wanted rid of them. And we're going to do something else there instead. You can see I've started putting up a fence. I'm going to finish this and make it go along the outside perimeter of the property. And right on the outside of it, this whole line is going to be pompous grass. So it's going to be nice and high and pretty and billowy. It's going to provide a bit of a sound barrier and a bit of a privacy screen. And then inside the fence, probably give a little bit of a distance. And then I'm going to put kind of a grid of wrought iron on which I'm going to grow morning glories and clematis. And then behind that, I'm going to grow grapevines and fruit trees, espalier. And I think I've mentioned that before, but that's where we're headed this year. Now, we go here, and you can see what happens, at least here, and probably you have this happen as well. In the winter time, people just throw things because they think that the snow will cover it. And this is an alley, so we're right next to an alley, and people just chuck things out their windows. And so here you've got an old softball or baseball, you've got broken glass from someone's beer bottle, and a lot of other trash, miscellaneous trash, that I already went through and picked up once, but more is blown in. So we've got to do that again. Now, here's something. This 
little thing here. This is Colt's foot. And Colt's foot has a flower that looks a lot like different, uh, a lot like, um, what are they called? Dandelions. But the root's different. I mean the stem. It's Dandelions have a straight stem, single stem. These look knobbly the whole way down the stem. They have these little nubbies on them and things. And under the ground, they'll put out runners. There's probably runners going from this one to this one to this one. And so when you pull one up, there's a lot that comes right up with it. They can go for quite a distance under the ground and then pop up somewhere else where conditions are right and they'll put up a flower there. So this is a plant that I don't really use for anything. I don't really try to eradicate it though. I mean, that's, again, biodiversity. It's something in flower early in the season when not much is. And so it gives different pollinating insects something that they can eat and, and things like that. And, you know, I'm sure it doesn't, ah, hello. Look at that. I just about killed us all, but um, it serves its purpose. So I leave it go. And you know, I'll pull some out, and I'll pull as much out as I have to if I'm planting there. But, you know, as far as just going out of my way to eradicate it, I don't. So let's move on and see what else we have. Okay, here we have something that you probably recognize. This is thistle. And it's really jaggy. There are jaggy, jaggy thorns on the leaves, on the stems. And they grow to be about as tall as a person sometimes and they put off the thistle flower at the top that's really pretty, I think, and then they turn to a fuzz and it blows around and that takes the seeds and it spreads. It also has a really deep tap root. Now, people see this as a weed everywhere here, but uh, it actually provides food and, and I think nesting material as well for a lot of little birds and things like that so it does do its thing but you know it's it's really invasive in a garden and I can certainly see why people want rid of it and in our locality you actually aren't permitted to let it grow but with people putting out thistle socks for birds and things in the winter to eat which is a nice thing to do uh, but it spreads thistle all over the place, so, you know, it's it's something I'm going to have to dig out. Now let's go see what else we have. Oh, dear. <laughs> this is the black raspberry patch. Now, I need to clear it out. There are things growing beneath it that I don't want. There's garbage that's blown in. There are bricks that I just need to move. A lot to do here, and you can see, look at this. Look at that, little leaves. Little leaves growing up and the purple stem, or the purple cane rather. Now these purple canes are the living plants that are gonna produce berries this year. If you look, I told you it looks terrible, but we'll get her done. Here you have an example of a living cane, the purple one, next to one that's from last season, the brown one. So what you can do at this time of year is you can go through, if you have blackberries, raspberries, whatever, and you see these dried up brown canes, those are dead, or they're done, they've done their job, and they're done, they're not gonna produce fruit, you can remove all of those. And here, here I am. How did that happen? Okay, here we have, uh, this is a plant that's nice and tall and for all intents and purposes here it's considered a weed because this is a berry patch, not a whatever this is patch. So it's gonna go, a lot of these things have to go. And then in amongst the berries, you can see growing that plant there this is a bushy, shrubby thing, and you've got the woody stems, and out is coming the leaves, and here's what they look like. I believe that that is some forsythia spreading, 
and I want rid of the forsythia because I don't care for it. I know it's terrible, but this is my berry patch, and that's where the forsythia is. So there's forsythia and one other kind of bush growing in amongst the berries, and I want to get rid of both of those because this is what I want to encourage this to just be a berry patch. So we're going to be working on that as well, and I'll take you along with me for that. There, to finish up, just as a little treat, check it out, daffodils in bloom. Nothing says spring like that. Isn't it beautiful? Well, I hope you found some helpful things here today, and uh, we will get back to you right away with some more things that I hope are also interesting. In the meantime, just go out and do what you can and enjoy your life and live, learn, laugh, and love. <laughs> okay, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.